it sounds a lot like sociopathy. <laughs> sociopathy. I don't even know if I can say it properly. It sounds a lot like you're a sociopath. Um, it's a lot. Behaviors can be very linked together. Um, a lot of Aspies can be diagnosed wrongly as sociopaths and vice versa. And um, especially with narcissism as well, which is an inflated ego, which um, seems to be wrongly diagnosed with Asperger's um, all too commonly. And these ways of interacting with people can be refined and they can work. They do work and it definitely worked for me. I'm not saying that I manipulated anybody in, in any sort of sense. It's just I needed to understand things logically and learning about those kind of things is, is very helpful in order to make up for the, the lack of social, inherent social skills that we, we, we lack in everyday situations. A good example would be um, the eye contact. Um, so there's something that I read like a very long time ago about um, the importance of the, the amount of eye contact that you have with someone that you're interested in. Um, so that would be like 60% eye contact and then 40% looking away, 40-60% in and then depending on the levels of intimacy you can scale it up and all those kind of things. They sound, it sounds a bit weird when I'm talking to you about it, but it was very important to, to make up for those those differences that we that, that I had and that we have. As we get older, and um, going to to about the age of 16, and um, 17, 18, the differences between us and other people who are artistic are very, very in your face and apparent. Maybe not to other people, because there is a tendency in teaching autistic kids um, to learn body language and learn certain social skills that, that make us pass, which is basically passing the test of someone thinking that you are not autistic. And in general, it does work and is one of the things that I'm, I'm pretty good at. Um, I wouldn't say that it was a good thing when I was younger. I do think that we should celebrate our differences a lot more than we do but obviously that that has to be worked on in the in the, in the long term as well as the the issues we we do start depending on how much we've thought about it and depending on how much research and cognitive thought we've put into it we do start to understand emotions i am starting to understand my emotions a lot more i'm learning to attach certain events with emotions that I felt. A lot of the time, events and emotions for us are very detached um, because events, logical piece of information, um, emotions, not logical, parts of our brain don't seem to make the con connection. So a lot of the time when we're younger, we just we just think we're, we're feeling bad and all of this bad stuff is happening as well. Um, but for some reason, we can't make the, uh, the link between them. Especially during our teenage years, we, we either get to a point where um, we believe that the, the thought processes that we have are flawed and that you know we, we've got a disease and a disability, which is hard to deny considering most people call it, well it is, it is classified as a disability um, despite people's thoughts about it. And we may either become at the mercy of our peers and their opinions and completely conform and not have a lot of you know self-esteem and um, a lot more shy than usual or we can go the opposite and you know think our thoughts are the only way of thinking and everyone else is silly and my thoughts are a lot more important than everybody else's we still find it um, difficult to relate to things and it can make us feel alien a lot of times especially if we're in uh, any down down periods of our life and social talk can feel like we are some kind of sociopath to us and it, it can make us feel very uncomfortable in those kind of situations because sometimes it's hard to justify to yourself whether your your reactions and your your emotions and your interactions with the other person um, is, is fake or real. It's, it's very difficult to tell sometimes. We do learn all of it and all those facial expressions and context and stuff like that, they get refined and we get better. We, we, we truly do.
being autistic is almost like jumping into a Sims game and playing about having a character that is you where you can do and interact based on other things around you but it still feels like a Sims game and although you understand everything it doesn't make sense to you um, as your being so it can, it can feel very alien and strange to, to us for forever I guess. Some people kind of give up a feeling like connects to people or being more like an alien um, during their life and go into sort of social isolation mode where they observe people around around them and in confusion. But I like to think there's a better way and I feel that we do we are very highly related to each other. Very, very, very similar. Um, and that's that's the kind of things that we need to be focusing on, I think, when we're talking about building bridges and you know, getting people getting people to interact and realise that they're not alone. Like even though people might be more different and maybe a bit more different than you know everybody else, um, it doesn't mean that they're they're not human as well. I guess. Depending on the person, they will reach a stage where they logically understand a lot of the world that they need to and they decide to kind of accept all the differences that, that we have and try and live with them. At our age, the social training has start to finalise and we're beginning to reach the point of you know, being, being able to talk to other people as, as well as they can with each other. And um, I guess that is the, the final passing, I guess. <laughs> Emotional sensitivity associated with people is starting to become a lot more manageable. It's still a lot more difficult, but our mechanisms of solving those difficulties have improved a lot. And the coping mechanisms help us slot into society unnoticed, like little autistic ninjas. <laughs> and some of the issues in our childhood are going to be a lot easier to accept and move on with and solve um, as an adult. And that's going to remove a lot of the, the issues that we may have collected um, going on into adulthood and also because of our autism. We become a lot better with the, the issue of change in people and emotions and just change in general events. So we accept, so we learn to accept and expect change in everything and we're a lot more comfortable with it as well. Hatred of autism doesn't always diminish it always it always may exist um, if people don't really know about those ideas of neurodiversity but a lot of us change our, our minds and we learn about all these things and learn about the differences between ourselves and others and we learn that mental health is separate to autism and we can finally be comfortable with having the diagnosis of Asperger's because we are Asperger's we learn that everyone is different in their own way. And whilst we can't relate to specific interpretations or ways of thinking, the most important thing is to have positive and happy emotions with other human beings. By helping others to fully understand better ways of finding a bridge between autistics and non neurotistics and non autistics by helping others to understand us better, finding ways to bridge our ways of thinking, we can make life for other autistics just a little better. So I hope you enjoyed the video. It took me a long time to write, and although this is a specific example of an autistic, it may not be indicative of every single autistic person, although I think it is quite a good, accurate representation of that. But do I say so myself? It just may not resonate with everybody, and that's okay. If you have any more views or questions or whatever, just remember to stick them in the comments because that's where I'm going to find them, and that's where I'm going to answer them. Remember, autistics are three times, I checked it, three times more likely to be bullied than a normal kid. A lot more likely to develop mental health conditions 
specifically anxiety. I don't know why that sounds so like sassy. <laughs> we are also more likely to be isolated, more likely to not have a job, and a lot more likely to take their life. This can be solved with the input of all the Aspies and Aspie supporters in a society banding together to take on this issue. And hopefully we'll be able to influence politics and the world and make living as an autistic in the future a lot better. Thank you all for listening. I'll see you in the next video. God damn! It's the end of the video series. Oh, you must be so you must be so sad like I am. I'm so sad that it's over. But don't worry. There's going to be some more videos coming out for you guys. So, keep your ass peeled. And hopefully there's, there'll be a little new video in the corner there if uh, depending on what time you're watching this. Um, or it might just be a random video from the past. Who knows? Make sure to ding that little bell. Make sure to subscribe. I'll see you in the next video! Goodbye!